Module 8, Chapter 5.1, Inverse Functions Just as addition and subtraction are inverse operations, functions can be inverses of each other. Start with a number x. Adding 3 and then subtracting 3 will give you x again. Adding 3 and subtracting 3 are inverse operations. Start with a function f of x equals x plus 3. The function g of x equals x minus 3 is the inverse function. These functions undo each other. One-to-one -one functions. If for any function, any two x values produce two different y values, then we have a one-to-one -one function. That is, when different values from the domain lead to different values of the range, the function is one-to-one. -one. A function f is a one-to-one -one function if, for elements a and b from the domain of f, a does not equal b implies f of a does not equal f of b. That means if you pick two different x values, then you're going to get two different y values. For example, determine whether the function is 1 to 1. If f of x is negative 4x plus 12, if we pick x as 3, then f of 3 would give us negative 4 times 3, which is negative 12, plus 12 is 0. For every one x value, there is only going to be one y value. And if you think about the graph, if the y-intercept is 12 and the slope is negative 4, we're going to get a line that looks like this. That means for this x value, this is the y value. For this y value, this is the x value, and so forth. If we pick two different x values, we are going to get two different y values. Okay, now consider the function f of x equals the square root of 25 minus x squared. If we graph that one, we get this little thing right here. But you notice for this x value, there is one y value. However, for the y value right here, there were two different x values, therefore it is not one to one. Let me say that again. For example, if the y value were three, we would get three equals the square root of 25 minus x squared, which means nine equals 25 minus x squared when we square both sides. Subtracting 25 both sides gives us negative 16 equals negative x squared or x squared is equal to 16, or x is equal to positive or negative 4. Therefore, this function is not a one-to-one -one function. Only functions that are one-to-one -one will have inverses. The vertical line test says, if every vertical line intersects the graph of a function at no more than one point, then the graph represents a function. So use the vertical line test to determine whether the graphs are graphs of functions. This first one, vertical line, vertical line, vertical line. No vertical line will ever touch the graph in more than one spot. So that one is a function. Same thing over here. Vertical line, vertical line, vertical line. Every vertical line will touch the graph in no more than one point. Now, we have a horizontal line test to see if a function is one-to-one. -one. And it says, if every horizontal line intersects the graph of a function at no more than one point, then the function is one-to-one. -one. For example, use the horizontal line test to determine whether the graphs are graphs of one-to-one -one functions. Well, if you drew a horizontal line right through here, you notice you have three different y values. Therefore, that is not one-to-one -one 
because you've got three x values, x1, x2, and x3, that all have the same y value. Whereas over here, every horizontal line will touch the graph in at most one spot. Therefore, this one is one to one. Now, just something to think about. Is a constant linear function always one to one? Well, if you've got a constant function here, all of these y values are going to be the same thing for different x values, so would that be one to one? No. Is a non-constant linear function always one to one? That just means it's a non-horizontal line. Yeah, then it will. Then it passes every horizontal line test. It passes every vertical line test. So yes, it would be. Is an odd degree polynomial function always one to one? Well, well not necessarily because if you think about just the plano f of x equals x cubed, then it looks like this and then it is one to one. But occasionally we're going to have an odd degree function that might look like this. And if we've got those little humps in there where the horizontal line would hit it in more than one spot, then it would not. What about an even degree? Is an even degree polynomial function ever one to one? And technically that one is no because even degrees are always some type of a parabola. As a note, a function that is increasing or decreasing on its entire domain must be one to one. If there is a turning point, then it will not be one-to-one. -one. Now, let's talk about inverse functions. Let f be a one-to-one -one function. Then g is the inverse of f, and f is the inverse of g. If f of g of x is equal to x for every x in the domain of g, and g of f of x is equal to x for every x in the domain of f. Now the notation for the inverse function is f to the negative one power. And we read that as f inverse. Okay, now what we've got is if we have the domain of f and we pl apply the f function then it comes over here and we get the range of f. Also, the range of f is the domain of the inverse function. And if we took every element in the domain of f inverse and plugged it into the inverse function, then what we would get out is the range of f inverse, which would actually be the domain of f. Now, to show that two functions are inverse functions of each other, you must show that f of g of x is equal to g of f of x. So, if we wanted to show that f of x equals x to the third minus 1, and g of x equals the third root of x plus 1 are inverses of each other, then we've got to show that f of g of x is equal to g of f of x. So f of g of x means we're going to take our f function. Everywhere we had an x, we're going to plug in this g of x. So we're going to get the third root of x plus 1, and we're going to take it to the third power, subtract 1. Well, the third root, third power gives us x plus 1 minus 1, so we get x. Now g of f of x means we're going to take our g function. Everywhere we had an x, we're going to plug in f. So we're going to have the third root of x, which is now x to the third minus 1, plus 1, which would give us x to the third minus 1 plus 1 is just x to the third. 
which would equal x. Okay, an example, determine whether each function is one-to-one. -one. If so, find its inverse. Well, all of our x values are different. All of the y values are different. Therefore, it, it is one-to-one. -one, and the inverse, which we're going to call f inverse, would be 2, 1, 3, 2, 8, 5, and... 5, 3. Now what about G? Is G 1 to 1? And actually this one is going to be no because if the Y value is 3, it has two X values of 3 and 6, so it was not 1 to 1. Now we're going to find the equation for the inverse function. To do that, the first thing you're going to do is interchange x and y. Second thing is solve for y. And then you're going to replace y with your f inverse of x. Okay? Now any restrictions on x and y should be considered in terms of domain. So, find the inverse, if it exists, of the function 4x plus 6 divided by 5. Give the domain and range of f and f inverse. Well, the domain of f is, there's a fraction, but there's no variable in the denominator. So, domain would be all real numbers. To find the inverse, it gives us f of x equals, so we're going to change that to y equals. Okay, and then we're going to switch the x and the y. So we get x equals 4y plus 6 over 5. And then we're going to solve for y, which means get y on the side by itself. So we're going to multiply both sides by 5. So we get 5x equals 4y plus 6. Then we're going to subtract 6, so we get 5x minus 6 equals 4y. And then we're going to divide by 4, so we get y equals 5x minus 6 over 4. Well, once you get it back in y equals form, then f inverse is equal to 5x minus 6 over 4. Now, what is the domain of f inverse? Well, same thing. We've got a fraction, but there's no radical, no variable in the denominator. So domain would also be all real numbers. Okay, let's do it again. If f of x equals the square root of x plus 5, find the inverse function. Give the domain and the range of f and f inverse. Well, domain of f, now remember this one, the square root, you cannot have a zero in the radicand, which means x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. Well, let's find the inverse. y equals the square root of x plus 5. Now let's switch x and y, which gives us x equals the square root of y plus 5. Well, to solve an equation with a radical sign, we're going to square both sides. So we get x squared equals y plus 5. Now to solve to get y by itself, we're going to subtract 5. So we get x squared minus 5 equals y. Well, once you get it in y equals, that y equals is your f inverse. So f inverse is x squared minus 5. Okay, let's go back and talk about the range. We forgot about range. So domain was all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 5. The range, any number you take the square root of is going to be positive. So the range of f would be from 0 to infinity. Now, the inverse function, remember the domain of the inverse function becomes the range of the original function and vice versa. So the 
f inverse function is x squared minus 5. However, we have to say that it's only for x is greater than or equal to 0, that, so that it matches up with the range of f. Now, what is the range of f inverse? Well, if you take any number and square it, it's going to be positive. And any positive minus 5, the least it could be would be negative 5. So we say that that one would be negative 5 to infinity, or as we had written earlier, x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Now the graph of f inverse, if f and f inverse are inverse functions, and f of a is equal to b for all real numbers a and b, then f inverse of b is equal to a. If the point AB is on the graph of F, then the point BA is on the graph of F inverse. Okay? Now, if a function is 1 to 1, the graph of its inverse is a reflection of the graph across the line Y equals X. Okay, like in this example. If this was the point AB and this is the point BA, and if you folded the graph along that X equals Y line, then those two points would match up. Now, a couple of important facts. If F is 1 to 1, then the inverse function exists. The domain of the F is the range of F inverse, and the range of F is the domain of F inverse. And thirdly, if the point AB is on the graph of F, then the point BA is on the graph of F inverse. So the graphs of F and the inverse functions are reflections of each other across the line Y equals X. Now you're ready to complete this section of homework on my math lab.